Hey guys. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're here. If even if we're not ready, we are here. So um <laughs> we are talking about cardio today with you guys. Um and so we before we start recording, we always have like a moment where we kind of go over our topic and like thoughts and things like that. And our thoughts were already like a little all over the place. So it should be a good podcast because we have a lot of opinions. <laughs> so what? we could see cardio is one of those things. And as I was writing like the cardio guide for the transformation challenge, I think I said it like three or four times in there where I was like, there's a lot of information out there about cardio because it's easy to study. And so there's like a lot of studies that get done. And so you're going to hear a lot of things about what you should do, what you should not do. This is really bad for this and like things like that. But you can find a study about cardio on like everything, anything. Uh, you can find them to fight each other and like stuff like that. So there's a bunch of nuanced information and it really just comes down to like you and what makes sense for you. So I know like one of the things, um, I see a lot, or I'm sure like we've all heard it. Like people will talk about the 10,000 steps per day, like 10,000 is this magic number or something. And like, it can be super person dependent. If you're somebody who only gets 4,000 steps per day, then if we tell you to go get 10,000 every day for the next two months, it's going to be like, holy shit. Cause now you're doubling more than doubling the amount that you're walking every single day. So maybe that's I not, I thought that was from that rent song, like 10,000 steps every day will get you healthy. I was how really excited for what you were going to do with the, the minutes where it's just, you know, I was like, what? As you started, I was like, the song's coming. You know, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> how is he going to make this work? <laughs> was that not it? Is that wrong? I like it. That's, That's not quite one. it. That's a no. different version of rent. I think. Crap. Yeah. So what do you, what's your guys is like immediate. Somebody brings up how much cardio should I be doing for fat loss? Where do you go? I feel, okay, I feel like people look at cardio as overrated, as in like everybody thinks that cardio is the thing. And here's the thing, cardio is good. Cardio is the thing. Um, but then they they focus fully on cardio and disregard all of the other things that are going to get them towards their goals, specifically for fat loss, like strength training. Um, you're going to want to incorporate strength training because you want to keep your muscle mass around and have shape when you are done losing weight or else you turn into this, I hate using this term, but like skinny fat. Yeah. Um, you need to make sure that you get enough sleep or else fat loss will just be harder. Um, you need to adhere to your diet. You can't you literally cannot out cardio a terrible diet. Um, Bet. <laughs> is that what the cool kids Bob and I now? actually had this whole conversation at dinner like, <laughs> like nights ago. Um, so I think it's overrated in terms of like people lean on it really, really hard. But I think it's also underrated because there are so many amazing aspects to cardio. Um, and cardio is great. Like it is a tool, um, and you want to use it as such. So I don't know. I know that that's like a very blanket statement, but cause I see two camps. I see people who literally get no movement, um, no exercise, or, um, when I talk to them about what kind of cardio they're doing, they're like, oh yeah, no, I took a route or walk around the block. And I'm like, okay, that is, that is, that is what cardio is. Sure. Movement, but also let's like get your heart rate up. Let's perspire a little bit. Let's, you know, ink like work, <laughs> right? It, system, like get the cardio system working. It needs to actually be intentional um, for it to actually like really, really take effect. Move the needle. Yeah. People who will so like do five or six days of like an hour on the Stairmaster and replace that with like a leg day or something like that. And they wonder why they feel like dog shit. So. So I, I think you're kind of like hitting a point here. Like we should probably define like, what is our definition of cardio? Because mm -hmm. for some people like cardio is steps and they're like, yeah, I did my cardio. I got my 15,000 or 12,000 or 10,000 or seven, whatever steps per day. So I got my movement that's my cardio. 
I think generally speaking, because I actually like to separate the two, I like to have steps and structured cardio where it's not, it's not something that we're still going to have to take recovery time for. It's not necessarily like marathon training or sprinting or none, none of that stuff, but it's definitely more intentional. Whereas like, I do want you to get a light sweat. I do want you to be like, Hey, if I was, um, cause if you're stro strolling along, long walk on the dog, yeah, you're going to have a conversation, no issue. But the, during your cardio, the specific structured cardio, I want that to be like, yeah, it's, I can still kind of have that conversation, but it's not the greatest. Right. <clears throat> And because some people are like, oh, well, the only, if I do cardio, I have to run. Well, that's not necessarily true. You could swim, you could bike, you could walk, you could do the elliptical. You could do the stairs if you're, you know, insane and hate yourself and hate life. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I think for us, it, it, it starts off with like defining what cardio is. And I think that's separate note. It's a weird thing about getting older is I find that the definitions that I've had for things in the past are no longer the current definition of that thing all, all the time, right? Like definitions can change. So therefore my idea of what cardio was prior, okay, well, my definition of that has changed. So now I have to rethink how I approach that and do that. So you have to also understand that as your definitions of these things change, your thought processes and your opinions of them may also need to change along with that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like, that's science, right? You know, that's yeah. what it's like- <laughs> things change. We learn more, we apply that, and then we end up learning more, like as we see things. And that's why, like, I think it's so important that there are like blanket recommendations out there that would probably work pretty well for the average person, right? Like when the, um, how did they, it was like 10, 3, 30 or 3, 10, 30. I don't know. Like when there was like some cool fucking hashtag or whatever that people were doing on TikTok for their cardio. And it was that you were supposed to do 30 minutes at three miles per hour at a 10% incline. And it was like this, this secret got put on the internet. And it was like, if you go do this, everything will change and you know your waist will be snatched or like whatever it is they say on the internet all the time trying to convince you that you should do this thing and 10 percent incline blows and so That's yeah high. i'm like wow okay Ugh. right so you like have, hurricane style exactly <laughs> category four at least um and you know so if you go do that if you're not doing that before and you start doing that and you don't change anything yeah. else I bet you might see some results. Your cardio system is going to get stronger. That's for sure. Cause you're going to be huffing and puffing. But I also have clients who have been doing dedicated cardio and things like that for years, for various reasons at different amounts, um, like competitors and three ten thirty isn't going to cut it. You know, maybe we've come back down to that. And so what their cardio on like a taper might be somebody else's, oh my God, this is kicking my ass. I can't do any more cardio, like when it comes to stuff. And so it's very person dependent. And then I think because of the way that our body responds to cardio, where it'll literally change it's, you know, at like a mitochondrial level for how it's uptaking energy and like things like that and what it's going to do with stuff. It's something that we, you know, unless we just truly love cardio and like we're doing it because we enjoy it and not just for fat loss, it's something you don't want to let run away from you because your body will adapt to it pretty quickly. And then that just becomes what it does. And then you have to do more to get things to move. And so it's one of those things we want to keep an eye on that. So before we get too far into this, you want to know what the CDC ACSM recommended guidelines are for cardio per week. So Still the for one moderate thing. intensity activity, you sh yeah, so that's for everybody, for healthy adults, they're saying you should do 150 minutes per week. Right. Moderate intensity, physical activity, aerobic. So that's two and a half hours. So nothing else. For health reasons, that's a normal recommendation. Um, and then they, they also say two times a week for strength training. So we'll kind of put that out there in terms of maybe there's some umbrella guideline there that some people put out for health stuff and to stay stuff. But, you know, I think unless Jess has something, I, I might have cut her off, but um, <clears throat> that's another thing I think people don't realize is that you do have adaptations to having some semblance of cardiovascular activity in your routine. And so one of those adaptations is guess what? You start making more enzymes for utilizing fat as an energy source um, which can help you improve maybe some of your, uh, performance and it can help you to have 
better just overall like ability to do volume. Um, and so like, I remember in powerlifting back in the day, everybody made the argument and even bodybuilding, you should do absolutely no cardio whatsoever. Don't do it. It's the worst thing for you. It inhibits muscle growth, blah, 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 blah. Whereas obviously there's also some studies out there showing that cardiovascular activity can actually have some muscle growth that can help improve muscle growth. But in terms of work capacity for what you can do like in the gym for the rest of your physique, it's also going to have a positive benefit on that because you're going to be able to get more out of the oxygen and the fat utilization for how your energy systems work, blah, blah, blah. It's too in-depth. Um, it's going to let you do more to have some sense of cardio in there on a regular basis. Not to mention, like we talk about the CDC, ACSM recommendations, I don't know, freaking health, like just general not right. having heart attacks and having solid cardiovascular health. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. And there is some validity to like that. Yeah. 10,000 steps or like some t type of movement. I, I, I'm like you and I'm sure Christina, you're the same. Like I prescribe cardio and steps as separate things. Right. Um, when I'm looking at someone's plan and when I am going into, or we're planning for a client's fat loss phase, we do look at how much cardio in terms of actual dedicated cardio, but also how many steps they're already doing, right? Yeah. And so we want to use that as a platform to make a plan moving forward because um, it's okay to have a little bit in there, right? Like, I don't know, three sessions of 20 minutes a week cardio, like where you're getting your heart rate up and then a step count of like somewhere between eight to 10,000 steps is like a, just a nice solid place to be um, in like, let's say a growth phase or a maintenance place. But if we're going to go into a fat loss phase and you're in a very different situation, such as doing four or five sessions of 45 minutes a day and getting 15 to 20 steps in a day, well, now we just need to add on top of your baseline. No, don't look at me like that. I know people that 15 do that. to 20 steps a day. Like oh, that's sorry, impressive. 20, I forgot the K. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that's different. <laughs> if you're doing all like, that cardio and you're only wrapping up 15 steps, I'm impressed. Walk to the bathroom and back. I, it was like one of those Baxter moments. It's like, I'm not mad. I'm just, I'm more impressed that you ate the whole wheel of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. So like if someone comes to me and they say, I want to go and do fat loss and they're getting 15 to 20,000 steps of it already in a day. And they're already doing, you know, four or five days of 45 minutes of cardio, for example, throwing that number out there, you just, your body's already adapted to these systems. And so we need to make a change to it. Um, like you so better, that's calories are high. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, sometimes, um, but it's a good point about your body's adaptations and setting yourself up for a place to have a successful fat loss phase and actually be able to utilize cardio for fat loss. Because like I, I said earlier, it is a tool, but if you're already pulling all of the tools and you're already using all of them, well, like, how do you expect to get more out of the tools that you're already using? Oh, I lost my dang 10 millimeter socket again. <laughs> it's always the one you need, never the one that's there. Right. There, there's only so much time in the day, right? And then there's only so much intensity that we're going to be able to get to, like with stuff, because sometimes you can play with that. Like I will, um, like I tell my clients, if we're doing like incline walking or something like that, I'll tell them what percentage. I want them at. And then like, I have a client right now where we're backing off her cardio, but she loves having, um, at least like 25 minutes, which that's usually like my basement for clients. I'm not usually going to take them below 20 minutes just for the sake of like, this is good for you. Keep doing it. And sometimes I'll have them do like maybe 10 minutes before, like warm up on the treadmill for 10 minutes beforehand, do the same thing afterwards. There's our 20. We can call it a day. Doesn't have to be crazy. But, um, I just 100% lost my train of thought as I went, oh, the, the incline. So as I back, I've been backing her off because she's at 25 minutes and like, she doesn't want to go any lower than that. We were 10% incline people. Actually, I think her treadmill goes to 12. So like at one point during her preps, we were using that. And then we've alternated pulling off time or pulling off intensity and like slowly worked the incline down. And that way, 
if I ask her to go back to 10, I think we're down to 5% right now at 25 minutes. And so, you know, if I was like, all right, now we're going to do 30 minutes at 10% incline, that would be a pretty big difference. Like if you're doubling like the hike that you're doing and things like that. So we want to build back not being so resilient to your cardio, because if it gets, if it's like, you know, you can just go do stuff and your body's not responding to it at all. Now we ought to like dig deep for other areas that we can try and look for stuff, but it's usually the one I was telling them earlier before we started recording that I'm starting to hear from a lot of people who are very motivated for fat loss where they're like, okay, well, I'm lifting five days a week. I'm doing my cardio. I'm thinking, shouldn't we scrap like one or two days of lifting and do cardio instead to get fat loss to move faster? And Ooh. yeah, unless you're tr like prepping for a race or something, and now running has become our priority, I'm not taking any of your lifting days. I'm going to tell you to lift heavier. <laughs> like, yeah, I think it's one of those, but for me, I, it just feels like a misconception, first and foremost. So like, yeah, you know, if we go back and we're like, okay, where do we start cardio? Well, that depends where you're at. Right. And then this other piece should I give up lifting for cardio? Well, what, what's your goal? If your goal is to maybe not keep as much muscle as you would be able to, you probably don't care, all right, whatever. But if you want to keep as much muscle, you want to keep your physique, you want to keep your performance and strength. Like I always say this like to people in dieting phases, the same training that builds muscle when you're not dieting is the same training that keeps muscle when you are dieting. You still want to lift heavy. You still want to keep that stimulus there. Remember, like building muscle is, is an adaptation. It's, a, it's the adaptive response to weightlifting and the stress you put your body under. So if you take that away, especially during a dieting phase when your body wants to spend less calories on stuff, well, what would it do? It would probably get rid of more what we call metabolically active tissue, stuff that costs more calories to upkeep. If it's not necessary, why would we keep doing it, right? It's like when you have the friggin' Netflix account that you don't use anymore, but you still keep it. It's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, most of us don't want to do that. It's like, it's like ah. well, when you want to save money, right? You start looking to get rid of what would seem like a bullshit expense, right? And as far as your body is concerned, if all of a sudden you start ramping up cardio and it's like, holy shit, we're running from, you know, tigers all day long. And like, it's really heavy yeah. to move all these muscles around. So screw it. And then you're going to get to a place where now it's trying to make it easier because your body's whole goal is just to have you live a nice life. It just wants to be in homeostasis. It's like, can't we just be comfortable? And then you change something and it's going to fight you. <laughs> and, you know, so in that way, that's where we end up losing it. So if somebody comes to me and they're like, you know, people usually have pictures or somebody that they think is like an ideal physique or whatever. And they're like, I just want to look like this person. Should I go do the opposite of everything they're doing to get me there? And it's like, uh, they didn't get the, the pictures that people send me. Um, I actually had a consult call today and she was like, can I send you a picture of what I want to look like? And I said, no. Yeah, um, I started to do that too. Because that person isn't you. Um, and I can want to look all day, have my body look like Jennifer Dory all day. I will never look like her ever. If I did her same plan, her same cardio, whatever, um, because she's a different human. She has a very different life than I do. She has, she's been doing different things very differently than me, right? Like there's, there's no way that you can look like those people. And the majority of the time, the pictures that I re have received in the past from individuals saying like, oh, I aspire to be like X, Y, Z. A lot of times these are muscular people. Like they have so much more muscle mass than you think that they do. Um, and it's because you see their muscles like pop out against their skin and, and they look full and round muscles. And that's because They've spent time strength training and not dieting. Now, again, dieting has its place and we're talking about cardio. So we're probably, we're talking about dieting probably. Um, but I think people, it, yeah, undervalue muscle because muscle requires calories, like Steven said, to hang out and be around. So technically the more muscle mass you have on the body, on your body, the more 
energy your body is going to require in order to just function. Um, so don't discredit, or I always like caution against discrediting strength. Um, also depends on your goals, right? Like, like you said, if you're going to go for a race or your marathon training, like that has merit and like, you need to pull back on strength training or a duathlon. I had a client do that and we had to pull back on training and that's fine. Um, but you know, just don't, don't forget about strength training too. <laughs> but I think like, and, and so we sometimes probably forget just because of our, like what we are into and our lifestyle stuff. But I'll, uh, I've had people send me pictures of like a Kardashian or like a JLo or like these people too, or, you know, just random uh, influencers or models and that kind of stuff. And then that brings in the other idea of like, those people's pictures, fuck, most of the time, aren't even what they actually look like in person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're, even if it's Angles. mildly Photoshopped, it's still like Photoshopped and airbrushed maybe for like some skin imperfections and stuff like that. And people use all the filters on Instagram all the time. So their face looks all pretty and perfect and nonsense and that stuff. So like when you get the idea that you want to look like somebody else, man, like they probably don't even look like you think they look. You know what I mean? That when they wake up in the morning, they, they probably, you know, maybe they look like me. They got some stubble coming in. They got to get rid of the stash or something. You don't know. Like, so don't get too far ahead of yourself. Like, but even I just if about Kim Kardashian having a beard, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be wild if she had to like shave her, her mustache every day? <laughs> no, and nobody knows. Everybody's just like, man, she's so beautiful. And she's like, ah, oh, there's so much fucking work. She got there with the shaving cream. Oh, she would pay somebody to do that though. Do I hate shaving? It's the and I don't even like. I just have the face really. Doesn't like, I like can't even complain. Time. I don't Ugh. like shaving my legs, so I can't imagine having to deal with like this right here. The like the whole jawline would just. You, you got to go with the grain. That's that's a trick. You can't go against the grain. But then does it go all the way down? Like. You got to like move it around and like pull the skin and stuff. So... But anyway, my husband gets very stressed out watching me shave my legs because he thinks I go too fast. <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like body hair is way different. Body hair is no, like facial hair is like, no, it's like naughty time hair almost. Right. It's much right. thicker. Right. It's much denser. It's not the same. You got to yeah. be careful. Naughty um, hair. <laughs> I, don't know. I was like, what does that mean? I'm calling it that now. New name. I took it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so like you oh. have to keep in mind that like the other people are other people. So like Jess said, and it's not even just like like everybody's genetic response to training is going to be different. So if you even are following the people who have more muscle and all that kind of stuff, guess what? Just who you were born to, like your birthing individuals, I don't know what they're calling people now, like that's going to impact whether or not you put on muscle at the same rate as somebody else. Yeah. Um, you know, how long your bone structure is like, there's, there's so many different things that have an impact. Like, so yeah, cardio, it's awesome for fat loss sidebar. Don't get stuck on how somebody else looks, be the best you, you can be. That's the cool thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it would be interesting if we talked about different types of cardio and, and what so, they utilized for. I mean, I feel like we delineate between like steps and like what we would normally call like low intensity, steady state, but, and I don't think, I, I don't really use much high intensity interval training anymore. Uh, hit cardio was super popular. So, you know, talk about like work to rest ratios. So like you would do like 15 seconds all out sprint or all out on the spin bike and then do like 45 seconds of rest. And you would do like five to 10, like total rounds of that or however many. And that used to be really popular and still is really popular. It almost kind of goes towards like Tabata style training with like spin classes and stuff. Um, I know a lot of like the boot camp class kind of stuff really loves to get in on the high intensity stuff. I really like push hard as hell. Let's go. Like, let's work hard. Cause you know, we feel good if we work harder or something, um, <clears throat> those kind of things, but we didn't touch on that. And then, then of course there's moderate, which is kind of in the middle. Um, and normally what we would look at, a lot of people like to use heart rate. It doesn't, it's not like a one size fits all thing. Um, we'll say kind of probably a good catch all decent for that. But um, essentially, I think of lower intensity, steady state as anything that's under VT, ventilatory threshold one. So like talk test, you can hold a conversation. You could probably do it for hours and hours on it. Moderate intensity, probably something you could do for, you know, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, but you're going to start seeing decrements 
as you get into it, you're not going to be able to do it forever. High intensity, short term, you're going to have to have a lot of rest and rest intervals in between. Yeah, I think that's an important one, the high intensity one, because hit and like, oh, well, I do hit, like gets thrown around like a whole lot. Like, oh, well, this morning I did a a 60 minute hit class. (laughs) And it's like, no, 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 no. Like you were doing hit for 60 minutes. Like, I promise you. So that interval that you just put out there, I remember when Paul put that into my plan on a spin bike and I almost didn't buy my Peloton because I was so fucking traumatized from those workouts. I remember I would do them. He'd have me do them on leg days, like afterwards, and it would be 15 seconds of all out effort. And then I just had to keep my legs like moving a little bit during the recovery to not totally seize up and then go again. And I remember the workout being maybe 12 minutes long. I'd have like a five minute warm up. I'd have the intervals. And then I would have maybe like a three minute cool down. It like, it never took very long. And I would like get off the bike and like lay next to it and want to cry and just be like, I'll never make it to my car. (laughs) I had, um, Steven, you had me do hit in my first prep. And I'm sorry. I've learned. (laughs) So (laughs) interval, like that kind of hit training, true hit training is like literally if you're doing something and you're sprinting for 15 seconds on 13 seconds, you think that you can't keep going, right? You that's slow down. How, you... Like you want to puke. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. that's how hard you're working. That's right. the capacity. And so when we're talking about true hit, it is explosive for very short terms. Like literally you're going to die explosiveness and then you're recovering. And this is really great. Like for athletes, um, like, I, my, um, synchronized swimmer athletes, we would do this type style of training, you know, um, because they needed explosivity. And so it really worked for them. Um, but for, let's say the majority of humans, um, yeah, like I did hit and because I have a background in athletics, I liked it for maybe the first, the only first time that I did it. Right. (laughs) Um, not again. (laughs) No. And then honestly, like it's very mentally taxing when you know that you have to go do that. Um, I did not have to do mine on leg day. Dear Lord. I did not do that on leg day. Steven was like, just put it wherever the fuck you want. Just do it away from strength. I have a comment on that when you're done. Why? That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but, um, it's super mentally taxing. It mm-hmm. stresses out your central nervous system. Mm-hmm. You are, it, it re- requires longer recovery time. So there's a time and a place and that type of activity and that training is really, really good. But for the general human per- population, really, really hard to kind of like come back from um, and then also adhere to. It can also I feel be like injuries happen more often. That. I I think that depends on the modality. So like, I think it's also much in modality, what type of hit you're doing. Like, I feel like less people get injured on the spin bike doing hit than they do sprinting. Sprinting. Yes. Sprinting. I feel like most people do it. Um, Did you guys do like exercise testing in your programs at all? Did you ever do a Wingate test? Um, No, I don't think I got to do the Wingate. So the Wingate test is like the epitome, the epitome of anaerobic. Right. So you're essentially you're doing like 30 second all out bike sprints and then still going at a a lesser degree, but with uh, resistance and probably like, I don't know, I want to say 25 percent of our exercise science class in undergrad puked after the Wingate test. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Like literally it's rep, but it can be really good for like maybe somebody who just doesn't have a lot of time, Mm -hmm. but still wants to be reasonably cardiovascular fit and who wants to make the most out of it. And they, they cannot just cannot, it's not realistic for them to invest more time into it than what they are. Maybe some hit cardio sessions, beautiful, beautiful option for you. But if you're training five days a week and you have other considerations that, you know, might impact your uh, recovery ability and those kind of things. Right. So if (laughs) somebody loves it, how many would you, so like I would give a limit to it how many sessions, if somebody was doing like a true hit session, how many would you say are intelligent per week? I want to do more than three. 
I, yeah, I cut it at two. Yeah. I, I think three is, is with the understanding that you're not training lower body twice a week. Um, maybe even you might be training it like once a week. Um, three is hard to manage. Um, and that would be meaning like there's no other real cardio. Everything else is really focused on recovery and you can handle that. Cause obviously everybody's a little bit different too. So I like to program for like, for my people who are doing cardio, like training, right? Like that's usually the only time I'm going to introduce intervals, even with stuff is if somebody's trying to build up that capacity. Otherwise I'm going to put them on easy, moderate intensity where they don't have to think too much. They can probably watch a movie, like something like that while they're doing it. And so if I put intervals into a plan, I'll probably do one day per week because I want them to work on the scary speed, the one where you're like, no, I don't think I can do that. And then you do do it. And over time you get faster. So I incorporate those to try and help with that. Huh? Steven Steven is laughing. Crack nut. (laughs) <laughs> hey coach what's my intensity uh your intensity is a scary speed scary, <laughs> scary speed the intensity. <laughs> i mean my clients probably hear a lot of weird shit with how i describe stuff but um so i like to have them purposely make the hard days hard um so that the other days don't have to be don't have to crush you like with stuff so for me like my interval run um, for this week, I paired with my worst leg day and because my marathon takes precedence right now, like my run went first. And so I ran and then immediately walked over to the weightlifting session and did that. And I was like, I'm just going to, those are my days where I'm just destroyed, like by the end of it. And then that way, when I have a five mile easy run where I'm supposed to stay conversational and I'll literally call my mom or something and just chat like the whole time that I'm running. So I know I'm keeping my intensity low and I'm going to pair those with like arm days or something like that. That way everything's still getting love, but it's not, I'm having one day that completely trashes me. And then the other ones I can still put the right effort into, but I don't feel like I'm just getting punched in the face throughout the week and like, can't get through it. Which, so, and and, uh, let me also go on. So all out effort in, in your stuff for intervals means like literally probably seven, eight seconds into it, you're slowing down. You cannot put out the same amount of effort. I think what most people think of as interval training is like fartlek training. I know it's a funny name. It's it F-A-R-T-L-E-K. And yep. that's like the typical intervals that you're used to with Tabata, where it's not all out, but it is high intensity with like moderate intensity back offs in between. And that's probably what most people, by the way, most of you guys listening, I assume are used to in terms of yeah. interval training, hit cardio uh, for how you define that. Yeah. I always think about those things as like a lot of fitness classes. Mm -hmm. and like Steven mentioned before like spin classes and boot camp stuff and f45 and like I'll have a client be like oh yeah but I I did a boot camp today or something like that and I'm like no no no, that's cardio that's cardio with weights um you're doing cardio um so I mean if if they're untrained yeah maybe maybe that's resistance training for you if you're trained uh, yeah. yeah Yeah. And so we get, you know, when I'm looking at a client's program, um, time comes into play. Like we mentioned, if they are short on time, I've had a few clients do more interval style or hit training, um, in a fat loss phase, just because they could not, they didn't have any additional time. Um, also enjoyment factor comes into play, right? So there's that like mental aspect of, well, do you like spin class? Okay do a spin class. Cool. Right. Um, again, I have clients that do two spin classes a week. We make sure that they are recovered properly for their strength training and it's spaced properly, whatever. But you know, you like going in that room and doing the disco ball. Like I was hardcore spin class for a hot minute, um, like five years ago, right? Like I freaking loved spin class. So I get it. Um, so it's enjoyment factor, but then it's also like, what do you have accessible to you. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, you know, it, the weather's shitty right now. Um, maybe you can get a walking pad. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of really cheap options on Amazon. 
Um, and you can put it on a desk, you can put it in front of a TV, you can whatever, wake up and just walk because I know that outside is like not a lot of people's friends right now um, in order to get some type of movement in. So I just listed off like those, I don't know, look, like just walking and steps, um, fitness classes, which I contribute to as like miscellaneous when I'm writing out a client's plan or if I'm talking to them specifically about classes, it's like spin class or dance class. Like I have a, I have a client who is a dancer that's cardio. So, but she does dance classes. Right. Um, and she loves it. Um, hit and then moderate. I don't use all of the time. Um, I've been playing around with different ways to prescribe cardio with my, um, more, I'll say intermediate lifestyle clients and competitors and tracking actual active calories burned on a like wearable um, instead of time. But then a lot of clients, it's just easier to just do time because it's clear and cut. Um, so yeah, if we want to elaborate on that, but. Oh, I was gonna say like, I normally, in terms of like the intensity going from lighter to moderate, I normally just like to work people up into it if needed if yeah. they need that extra expenditure. But by the way, when the hell did everybody forget about swimming being like awesome, solid cardio? Nobody ever Pretty talks hard. about swimming for cardio, which is great, by the way. Yeah. And say that you're a senior and it can be low weight bearing, which is awesome on the joints. Um, and an normally they're going to be like class type stuff. So it also gives you social environment as well, which right. I, I think like that's one of the things a lot of people miss out on or forget about is like, that social interaction that you get from classes for a lot of people, that might be the only social interaction they get all day. So like you can double that into something like a class or, you know, something where you're going to have other people around They like, it gives you a double benefit. So now not only are you getting the benefit of the cardiovascular activity, you're getting to do something different, but you also have people around that are probably going to get you or maybe in similar situations, depending on what you're doing. And so you get that social aspect, which can also be because we didn't, haven't really talked too much about this yet. Um, like when you exercise, even if it's just cardiovascular activity, you have that endorphin release, which can be really great for how you feel throughout the day as well. But it can also help you in maybe some of the other mental health aspects of just having people around, seeing people getting out of the house, that kind of stuff too, which can be just far and away an amazing life-changing thing for some people. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big one for enjoyable workouts like with stuff where I think a vast majority of what you should, what you do should be because you get something out of it where you finish and you're like, hell yeah. And you just feel good for like everything you did. And then, you know, for a lot of people, cardio might be the thing though, where they're like, no, I hate it. I hate all kinds. I don't want to do it. And there, and then it's like, Okay, fine. Be unhealthy. Like, which sounds shitty, but I mean, cardiovascular disease, it, I don't know where it ranks anymore, but it's always up there. Right. And we can't look around like the stats for the United States and be like, oh yeah, we're a country that does too much cardio. We should pull back. Like, you know, like there are markers. Are you pulling it up? That 2021, show... the top uh, rate of death uh, was heart disease at just under 700,000, at least based on my very quick uh, WebMD Google search. Yeah. So it's still up there kicking most people's asses, right? So that's why when they put something out where, you know, 150 minutes at a moderate intensity, they're not even saying light intensity, which means if you're out there like putting in steps or just hoofing it, then you're probably not checking that box. And I think they do have a different number, don't they, for like light? Like there's a different way to look at it. But, um, I'll hear people bring up things like, I've had this talk with Vic, with my husband, where he's like, but my heart rate gets really high while I'm lifting. So doesn't that help? And I'm like, no, that's actually like a, a big indicator that we probably need to do more cardio. <laughs> like, you know, if your weightlifting sessions feel like you're doing cardio because you can't, you have to wait just forever for your heart rate to get to a place where you feel like you can catch your breath and you have to wait for this really long time, then that's that's a good indication that we probably need to be purposely elevating our heart rate and allowing that adaptation to happen like for some time and things like that. So that's one of the things that I pay attention to if people are like, oh, I just can't because I'm just dying. Well, I'm like, we probably need to reevaluate like me, A, 
I want to see some videos for intensity of these workouts that are kicking our asses and like, let's work on trying to get better there. And so it has been fun, but I feel like because it's, it's out there a little bit more. And I think there's just more people who are like bigger names in things like, um, maybe they're just not like bodybuilding competitors, but like they've been bodybuilders and they have that, like that build. And now they're starting to get into like running just for the sake of being able to say, I can do it because there's a ton of people out there that if you're like, I need you to go run a mile to like grab some medicine, like they wouldn't be able to do it. And, and we should be able to do it to a certain extent and like not die. I have asthma. Okay. Just get off my back. You get a pass. You get a pass. You can bring your inhaler with you and you can jog. <laughs> I sadly don't get a pass and I would die. Yeah. But I have asthma I'll and a, a bum okay. knee still. <laughs> the knee is a good excuse. That one for mm. sure. <laughs> so, but um, I think it's, it's one of those things that even if you don't love it, then we just have to find what modality do you hate the most or hate the least. And then that way we can at least get something in because this is like a paying your mortgage kind of deal mm -hmm. where you, you just got, you have to like too bad. <laughs> and like, and, and so like, I like it because I joke about the asthma and the knee, which they're both actual things. Yes. I have asthma apparently. And yes, I had an ACL reconstruction like six months ago. Uh, but like some people just have shit gait. Like maybe you have a leg that's one leg that's longer than the other, or you know, like there's a reason you legitimately hate running and it sucks or it might not be a good thing for you. And that's yeah. why like it becomes important to find those other modalities that maybe you do, maybe even it is, yeah, you just hate it less. But like, and to be okay with that and not like just subscribe to this idea that cardio equals running. Right. And there is no okay. other, and that's it. If you're not running, it's not cardio. What do you, you do for a hot yoga class? What would oh, you God. Do I've done that. It's Oof. cardio. I, I literally used to be also a hot yoga fan girl fanatic all yeah. the time. <laughs> like an hour, six days a week. I was in there all the time. And oh, I was not much, but like three days a week. I loved it. I was like obsessed when I was in the military. I would go after work, but um, your heart rate. I, have, I could have uh, afford it. Right. Yeah, that was like my big splurge, like back then, where I felt so cool because, like, oh, I have yoga tonight, you know, and it just feels so like, oh, this is just what I'm doing. Um, but a hot, something like a hot yoga class, I'll have clients be like, where there maybe somebody where I'm trying to pull their cardio down because I'm like, hey, we're doing too much, and they're like, well, I stopped going to spin class but I am going to hot yoga now, um, like this many days per week or something. And that's like the, the heat of it. And then the fast flows, like your heart rate is probably going to be up that entire time. And so that's a great option where maybe you hate traditional cardio that everybody thinks of. You don't want to spit, sit on a spin bike. You hate running things like that. Hot yoga might be a wonderful thing to try where you're going to have an elevated heart rate for an extended period of time. Maybe if you need to pull your cardio down, that could be one where, you know, now we're not doing so much cardio per week. So it really does pop up in a million places. And so what I will say along with this is for like hot yoga, just because your heart rate is up, like in that context might not necessarily be the best thing if your heart rate is up because you're dehydrated. Yeah, um, you're in, in I've been to hot yoga once. And it was when I was powerlifting, I went to go and impress this girl that I thought was cute that loved hot yoga. So I did like an hour and a half long powerlifting workout, drank a gallon of water there, then went straight to hot yoga, drank, went through another gallon of water there, like within like three hours. Okay. It was not a good thing for me. Um, <laughs> and so when you're doing these things where you're sweating and you're doing your cardio, make sure that your hydration, your electrolytes, you're paying attention to that stuff too. Um, because just like we would say with the bodybuilding stuff, yeah, um, cutting water is dangerous and dehydration is not good, it bad. Like you want to be aware of that stuff, especially when you're going into um, that kind of situation where dehydration is going to be a bigger factor. Yeah, no irresponsible yogis here. It's not allowed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Only picnic bats get stealing ones. Bear, yogi bear. Got it. Mm. <laughs> Jessica's like, I have something to he's say. He's got something. It's oh like, she's going to sneeze because the words where did it go? <laughs> Oh, I'm like, is there anything else that we didn't touch on or need to touch on? No, I mean, it's, it's, I feel like it's that thing. Like, don't, don't necessarily overcomplicate it. You hate running, right. go for a bike ride, go for a swim, um, go for a hike out in the mountains, right? Just take your bear spray with you because that yogi likes his picnic baskets, right? Whatever. Um, <clears throat> 
Hey, boo -boo. Like, you don't like doing it alone? Go find group classes. There's a, a bunch of them out there. There's plenty of gyms that offer them. You can get in at pretty reasonable rates, especially yeah. if you're like in retirement age. Silver Sneakers is awesome, right? So there's a lot of options out there to like get you into it for somebody. So it might not be the perfect thing. You might not be in a spot where like you really enjoy getting sweaty and doing that stuff. Like there are things that will help pull you into it that will help give you a supportive environment that like can help you to enjoy it more maybe even hate it less all right worst case scenario but you don't have to overcomplicate like make it simple yeah softball league <laughs> yeah no i think that's like a huge key it's just, it doesn't have to be crazy you don't have to put too much thought into it we're just looking at feeling like we're working a little bit and um it doesn't necessarily you don't want it to be the star of the show all the time unless you are training for something cardiovascular. You probably want everything else to be the star of the show over your cardio, unless that's the very specific case. And even then, if you are training for something you need, like you have to lift because it's going to help prevent injury. It's not just a matter of like, nobody wants to look like marathon runners. They want to look like sprinters. It's because it's also, if you're lifting weights and doing things like that, it's going to keep you healthy. So it doesn't always have to be something where you're kicking your ass in the gym all the time too. If you're adding lifting into your cardio to start with, be nice to yourself. We're just trying to strengthen like little things as we go. So um, I think minimal effective dose is always a great idea as you dive into things. We don't need to go bonkers. Um, and yeah, that's yeah. it. If you go bonkers, you risk, like it's the same thing, right? Like you risk getting hurt if you go from zero to 60 with lifting. If you go from absolutely nothing to all of the cardio, you risk getting hurt. And like, yeah, it could still be like you tear or something, but there's also like stress fracture stuff from you're not being used to it. So take your time. You know, I know patience is not everyone's virtue. It damn sure ain't mine but sometimes it can pay off. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, another good one in the books. Um, you know the drill. I always beg everybody to go hop over to YouTube and everyone's been so awesome. We're like 3,200 people now, I think. Um, oh. so we're getting Follow my page too. I'm, I'm still in front of the studio page right now. That was new homework. I, talk, I want to stay there. Yes. So <laughs> new homework. if you're going to go to YouTube and subscribe to the Probe studio, I'm going to need you to like, subscribe to Stevens first. And then, then you can go over to the studio one, but make sure you do both. Um, and you know, leave us comments, let us know if you have any questions about anything. We're super easy to find via email and stuff like that. It's just our name at pro physique. Uh, we got the transformation challenge coming up here. We're like three weeks away, three and a half weeks, something like that. Oh, I can't yeah. do math. Um, and we have command the stage coming up like 2024 is officially there's no more like ramping up. I feel like with everything we have going on, it's full scale. Like it's part. ramped. We're on the ramp. We are on the ramp. We're going to dive what into the guy that did. We're evil can evil right now. We're there. <gasps> like going. We're up. over the buses. We're about to jump over. We're about to do it. So um, come along for the ride. And God, I hate who I am. <laughs> Why? It's such quality weirdness <laughs> and randomness. <laughs> On uh, that note, oh wait, I have to ask, what is the skull behind you? It's so my beautiful wife, and you will have to go to YouTube to see it. My beautiful wife did a painting of Skeletor, but like realistic Skeletor. Yeah. So that is my Skeletor drawing from my my wonderful beautiful wife. I thought it was a picture. So props to Jillian yeah. because I did not think that that was a painting, but I've looked at this every time we've had a meeting or a podcast. I've stared at that damn thing and needed to know what was behind it. So <laughs> yeah, it's Skeletor, not Barnaby the Disapproval Bear. I was going to say Barnaby's over there. I remember yeah, look, when you had to like go back to that one store to get it. I know, right? That you were like thinking time. about it endlessly for that entire day. You wouldn't stop talking about it at dinner. I was like, just go buy it. It was a hyper focus. What was it like? A hundred bucks, I think, too. Yeah. Where did you uh, get it? Denver, when we were there for the the At coaches. The coaches thing. Hey, that looks very Colorado. I have something similar in my basement, so <laughs> it looked like yeah. it was from here. Um. Okay. Well, welcome to Stephen's office. Uh, we've <laughs> now done a tour. We still have many things that we could talk about in the future, so don't worry. Um. But yeah. Okay. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.